Samuel, the title that you, you, you selected for this film, um, you came up with a, actually a very clever title. It relates to the, the dance, which is implied, it's visually demonstrated in the, in the film. And there's a lot of uh, t uh, subtext to that actual movement. Um, not only the Boxton approach, but also the fact that it's repeated steps. But I also, there's also the military jargon, um, which is, um, it relates to a kind or unkind greeting, depending on what the context is. Um, I was wondering if you could elaborate on the specifics be behind Foxtrot, the title. And by the way, after I, I choose the folk, I choose the Foxtrot because this is a kind of dance that there are many interpretations of his steps. Yes. But you will always end at the same starting point. Yes. Later, I found out that in the uh, alpha bet, the phonetic alphabet. Yes. Foxtrot is the F in the military all over the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't knew it. Oh, you didn't know that. Uh, suddenly. So it's not a commonly used um, term terminology when you were serving. No. Not at all. Okay. Um, Your screenplay is quite clever. It's it's uh, very smart, um, um, and you and you play with audience expectations. Those coming into the film, having seen Lebanon, we sort of get a sense of dread um, for a good portion of the film. Um, and then there's this tonal shift. It's crafty. It's so smart. Um, I really, really uh, indulged and loved the strategy that you employed. Um, I was wondering if you can dis discuss physical comedy and, and how you went about writing those elements into uh, uh, this rather uh, in in uh, ingenious screenplay. Because the film, is, as far as I'm concerned, is first of all a philosophical puzzle, if I can throw such a dirty word in yes. there. Yes, yes. A puzzle that tries to crack this vague concept of what we call fate mm -hmm. um, through a story about father and son they are far away from each other but despite the distance and the total separation between them they change each other's fate and of course their fates so fate from my point of view is the central thing this is the spine of the film um, uh, so the challenge I put I, 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 the challenge I put to myself was to, to deal with the things we control and those that beyond our control. Mm -hmm. um, it's regard, it's, 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 it somehow came out from a personal story of the, what I said, I think, ah, what I, I told you. You related, story. yeah, you related that to the audience. It's yeah, actually so quite fascinating. So I won't waste your time. Yeah. Your um. um, and I uh, usually build an emotional process that I want the audience will experience during the film. So I told myself, when I wrote the script that uh, the first sequence should shock and shake, yeah. the second should hypnotize and the third should be moving. Because th there is something uh, round and complete in such an emotional process and the division into three sequences uh, helped me to, uh, to control it. There are, more, there are of course other reasons. Each sequence reflects in its, with all its cinematic tools, the, reflects the character who leads the sequence. Mm -hmm. The first sequence reflects the character of Michael, so it's a sharp sequence, cold, uh, uh, very graphic, symmetrical, yeah. uh, built of uh, detached compositions and long and accurate shots. This, the last sequence that belongs more, more to Daphna, to the wife, is, uh, is, 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 is simple and, 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 uh, and loose. Warm, and yeah, soft. warm, yeah. And the the, the, the mid sequence is floats a few centimeters above the ground, like a dreamy inner world of a dreamy artist. Uh, it is painterly. The, uh, the I choose uh, to because yesterday uh, someone asked me about about the comedy. Yeah, and I did, and then I I, I didn't answer it uh, correctly because it's not a comedy; it's an irony. Uh -huh. It's an irony that's uh -huh. somehow always associated with uh, with fate. Um, during the Q and A, you actually went in, uh, into detail about the process, um, and and Lior had mentioned that um, um, how he sort of like the scenes were uh, there was no cuts, and he sort of like 
felt not lost, but he was in a in a spiral a little bit. And I was wondering if you employed that technique. Uh, are you attempting to disarm the actor and get him out of the acting space? Exactly, because uh, imagine yourself 12 shooting days, 7 in the morning till 7 in the evening for the first sequence, and you need to act a father that uh, his son died one hour, one, two or three hours ago. Yeah. And it's, it's, and I, 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 I want to, to see it in your eyes. I want to believe you. And any, I, I, can't, I can't compromise on, on a, even on a tiny fake. So it's not something that you can act. Uh -huh. You can act it very good, but I will see the acting. Uh, yeah. And I, f I, I, I felt that I need to bring him to, to, to a state of mind that is really there. He don't uh, and live the moment, he, and he don't care anymore. Mm -hmm. And he lost, lose control on himself. Yeah. And I saw, I, I, and the system was yes, not to turn off the camera between the takes and to talk with him during the take. To, I, I, to I, I told, him. No, I told him like you are, uh, you are, uh, you, you, your son is died from you, you asshole, you fucked it again, <laughs> and oh, it's on the character context, of course, you know. And uh, and not and, and to turn the shot into a session. Mm -hmm. Usually the cut release the actor. Is the action bring him to the yeah step. and the cut? But when the cut is not coming, and, and there's no reprieve, there's no yeah. removal. So in the, it's like when you it's like you know physically the scene of the couple in the rain. Yeah. So it, it's a desert. It's four degrees. You need to, a, 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 an actress need to stand with the, with the evening dress and to, and it's so cold. And I, I, I told her, listen, I will shoot it 10 minutes because the four, the, the first three or four minutes will be a nightmare. <laughs> I won't earn nothing from that. But after you will, you will start to experience it. At some point you will get to the stage that you will, you will not feel the coldness anymore. You will you, you, you'll just be there and you'll just live the moment. This is a kind of zone yeah. that you can produce diamonds yeah. from. <laughs> um, yeah, and you get a sense of that, the, the, that humiliation of just standing there and just awaiting a fate that's, that's unknown. Um, you get a strong sense of that in that sequence. Um, um, I was wondering if you could uh, discuss the insertion of animation. It is quite beautiful. It's quite... Uh, it's interesting that you call it... An, everybody called it animation. And this is not animation. It's, 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 it's drawing. Tuning. It's draw. Have two, two keyframes. That's okay. all. Okay. Like he's standing on the tongue. Yeah. And now he's saluting. And there is a, a airplanes. Uh, yeah, yeah. So... I think that what creates the illusion of animation is the two cre the, the jump between the two keyframes and, and especially the sound. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, but what? what, what oh no, I was just saying if you could. Uh, I mean, it's a very specific choice. It's a. It was something I was not expecting. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't uh, look too much into your film before going into it, um, but it came as a. It's a. It's. It was a nice way to insert this generational idea that you have from the onset. I mean, it goes from grandparents down to the the, the youngest of this this long uh, family, and I thought it was a curious way to sort of um, um, uh, thread um, specific ideas about uh, about a father and son. Um, it was important to me that he will understand that his son uh, knew exactly that he has a secret, that yeah. he has hiding something. That yeah. Everybody, everybody has their secret because, burning. Because it, because the film deals with the with the post-traumatic men. Mm -hmm. Usually, the the, the, the stereotype of, of post-traumatic men, the stereotype is people think that you have a nightmares, you are poor, you are lonely. And in my, uh, especially in my generation, um, my mother was a Holocaust survivor, so I couldn't complain about nothing. Of course not. I give the example that if I was bringing. Uh, a mathematic test and the mark was seven, she used to look at it and to say, for this I needed to survive the Holocaust. So, so we couldn't complain. Uh, uh, 
when, when we came back from war with two hands, two legs, ten fingers, to say that we feel bad inside us mm -hmm. was something unacceptable. So many, many men that experience war trauma do, uh, try to prove that they are okay. Yeah. So from time to time they can even achieve uh, things in their life, like they can build a successful business, make money, raise family. But inside them, the soul is bleeding and you don't have any corner to download it, to kick the door yeah, because yeah, you yeah. need to, to download it somehow. And uh, I found out that a man with an X on his face uh, uh, expressed this, uh, this, this, this situation like you are walking with, this, with an X on your face yeah. and think that nobody, yeah. nobody sees it. And, and it and, and there is a, also a trick there, a, a kind of trick, because now we are entering into a sequence between him and her, and this will, and I can create and, and establish, like to say, they, they he met her, they married, yeah. uh, but, we, but it's not on the front, it's coming through this uh, scene, and yeah. when you get into the scene, you know everything, uh, you, you, you have like a... Basic established to the to the third sequence. The production design specifically and the um, the checkpoint, um, they're, they're the look and the symmetry and obviously the the the, the, the physical comedy and the uh, how, what what were you referencing as as ideas um, for the specific look of decay, but there it, it's like decay, but there's almost like a a surrealistic approach to it. Yes, um, it was because I was aware to the to the to the noise mm -hmm. that the sequence and especially the last scene could evoke. That some people will choose not to see the broad picture. And it was important to me to deliver the broad picture. So I chose to make to do it surreal in a way that you don't have to be a genius to understand that there is no such a roadblock, no such a mm -hmm. specific reality, mm -hmm. to create a situation that it's quite understandable that that this is one big allegory. Uh, I mean, if people will choose to see the specific picture, I can do nothing about it, but mm -hmm. I did my best to deliver the broad picture, because for me, the, the roadblock is a is a microcosmos of society, of, yeah. of, of apathic and anxious, anxious society, and of a distorted perception that comes out of a terrible past trauma. Yeah. The last scene with the two couples, the young couples, is, 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 is a climax of, of, of an unhealthy situation, a situation that's getting more and more uh, crooked. Yeah. Uh, it's not a film about a container that getting crooked. It's a yeah, film yeah, about yeah. the situation. That yeah, exactly. Um, the the Mercedes, the, the car burial, is uh, expresses repress and denial. We prefer to to bury the true in the mud that we create rather than confront it and ask ourselves uh, penetrating questions. Yeah. And when the general, the, the cleaner, come and try to close the case and said, uh, "What happened? Happened? And, uh, this case is closed." And, someone want to say something let him speak here and now so they doesn't doesn't say nothing but the Ken is falling down and rolling and saying we are more crooked now because yeah because of you so it was important to me to deliver a broad uh, message and not that it's not about soldier mm -hmm. kills by mistake Palestinians mm -hmm. and, 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 uh, and uh, cover it uh, it's yes. a society that... Yeah, it's not who done it. Back in your day, were women allowed to serve in the military? Was it part of their... Were they obliged? In my time? Yeah? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, but it's more easy for them. For because women. they're assigned less... Because they are not uh, fighters. Okay. And because the army don't need all of them. Mm -hmm. So it's quite easy to find a way not to do it like if you say I'm a religion yeah you, ne you just have to sign on a paper that you're a religion girl and okay you're out of it okay but uh, with 
boys did and stuff in the air. <laughs> it's, got, it's two years, right, to this day? Three. Three, three, three okay. Three years. And, I, I, and I choose the army because the army is a, is a reflection of, a, of our society because it's not something that you choose to do. Mm -hmm. It's something that everybody does. Yeah. So it's like a mirror yeah. for, the, for our society. Mm -hmm. And it was, and, 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 and to tell you the truth, I wanted to, 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 to somehow break this holy cow, because uh, if, for example, I would have done a, a feeling about a terrible crime that happens in the police, the, the day after, nobody would say, uh, oh, it's a shame for the police or something. They would understand this is a film. Yeah. It's all about yeah. if you touch the... And, and, I, and, I, and, and, and I did it. In, in a provocative way, mm -hmm. because I think that this is the job of art, of creation, to not to be nice and gentle and nice to have, but to, to, to extreme the, sit the, the situation, to, to provoke it, to raise discussion, to mm -hmm. raise... Uh, uh, the people will start to talk about it, because this is the problem. It's like a taboo, you mm -hmm. can't talk about it. Mm -hmm. It's army, it's the best uh, moral army, I mean, the best moral army in the world. You can't be moral as yeah. a soldier, I mean. I remember that in Lebanon, we entered a village and they told me that in every second balcony there is a terrorist with, uh, with missiles against tanks. Yeah. And in, 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 in other balconies you have families. Yeah. So Growing if, if you hesitate, and, yeah. you will die. Yeah. If you won't hesitate, you will kill families. Mm -hmm. So what are your options to mm -hmm. be moral? I mean, mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. a legend to be moral. You can't be moral. Well, uh, thank you very much for your time and congratulations on uh, the award uh, back in Venice. I'm sure that's a, a great validation after a long gestation period where you, you took your time on, uh, on this brilliant screenplay and film. So congratulations and thank you very much, Hanoi. Thank you.